Hi, and welcome to the online product demonstration for the HireDesk Applicant Tracking System. In today's session, we'll cover a brief overview of talent technology, as well as the ATS itself, and then dive in and take a closer look at HireDesk's core functionality. Let's get started. From an agenda standpoint, we'll briefly cover talent technology, the solution overview itself, and then take a look at the ATS, as mentioned, and then talk a little bit about implementation support and details along those lines. So a little bit about TTC. We've got an 11-year history of innovation and acquisitions in the recruitment technology industry with a strong track record of customer success, boasting over 800 customers. We've got a deep client service track record with 96% plus client retention rate. Very strong in this industry. Um, we run 80 million applicants annually through our different technologies for our clients and have many deep partner relationships in the industry, as you can see below. We've got clients in all industries. There's definitely no client that we can't handle um, in the HireDesk ATS. A couple of examples here listed on the page. So a little bit about HireDesk. Um, HireDesk is an end-to-end -end applicant tracking system. We can handle um, the recruitment workflow from job creation through approvals, um, applicant workflow, so candidates coming into our database um, it, from new uh, to the ultimate end game of hired or not a fit for a position. We've got the ability to bring hiring managers into the ATS uh, from your organization or clients uh, for our staffing agency customers. Uh, that, that's an optional feature that we can run um, through a couple of different ways. We've got the ability to keep hiring managers and clients out of our system. We've got the ability to invite our, our hiring managers into our ATS on a limited basis, and then we've also got a fully functional, a um, little bit more robust hiring manager portal piece um, when we need to bring hiring managers and customers um, into the ATS with a little bit more functionality. Uh, our talent portal functionality is, is really outstanding in the system. We've got fully configurable candidate-facing applicant por um, career portals uh, for application purposes. They're configurable. Uh, based on the different workflows that we set up in HireDesk, and we want those, those application portals to integrate seamlessly into our customers' career sites. And then last but not least, a little bit about metrics and administration. Um, the HireDesk system does have a very powerful uh, standard report offering, as well as uh, an equally powerful, if not more powerful, ad hoc report builder. Uh, so what we really want our customers to be able to do is build reporting um, based on your own unique, specific needs. In, in the ATS. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at HireDesk and jump into the live solution presentation. So what we see on the screen here is the desktop in HireDesk. And what I like to call the HireDesk desktop is kind of the central command center or the launching point to move throughout the system in the ATS. Uh, the, the desktop is uh, a bit configurable. We've got the ability to determine on a login-by-login login basis how we want our own desktop to look in HireDesk. Each of these modular pieces that we see represented with the boxes on the desktop can be moved uh, based on our, our own preferences on how we want our system to appear uh, based on our own unique login again. So as an example, if I want to grab my activities and pull those over to the upper left-hand corner of my screen, I can just grab this little raised area and pull it over. Maybe I want my jobs in the upper right-hand corner. I can grab the raised area of that module and pull it over. We can offer a couple of different views on the desktop, uh, one column, two column, three columns. We can also pull certain modular pieces off on a login by login basis or on an organizational basis as set up in implementation. So a little bit of flexibility with the desktop. At the top of the screen, we've got a dynamic menu that's going to travel with us throughout the system. Uh, the different functions of the menu are going to change with us as we move throughout the application. In the upper left-hand corner of the desktop area, we've got an all-contacts lookup. If we want to get a little bit more granular, we can break that down by candidates, hiring managers or clients for our staffing-based customers, and then new applicants as well. Great little tool for if you get caught on the phone and uh, need some quick information on a candidate or a new applicant or even a hiring manager or client. Beneath the all contacts lookup is the navigation tree. We've got a couple of pieces of the modular uh, desktop items at the top of the navigation tree. And then down below, 
a couple of different really important pieces of the nav tree, the reports modules, the ability to use the data import tool in HireDesk, and if granted that this access by your organization, the ability to access the system administration capabilities of the system uh, to make changes to the system on your own uh, once implementation has been completed. Beneath the navigation tree, we've got what's called the active windows section, and this is one of my favorite pieces of the system. Uh, something that we're, we're very proud of at HireDesk is this active windows section, because what we get with all these great SaaS-based offerings like HireDesk is the flexibility to use our ATS anywhere we are that we can grab an internet connection. Uh, at the same time, the SaaS-based offerings are still dependent on page load times with the internet. And uh, what we really want to do is try to pick up as many as efficiencies for our customers as possible that are using HireDesk. So as an example, as you can see down at the bottom of my own screen here, I've got a number of windows open in my, in my operating system environment that I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, HireDesk is the same way. So if we create, open a window in the system, um, we're able to bounce to different areas of the system very quickly without having to, to wait for a page to load for us. So it's going to cache that page for us. Uh, you know, a quick example is I could be working on a job, such as the one I set up for today's demo session, and remember that I've got an appointment or an activity that I need to take care of. I can go back to my desktop really quickly, check my schedule, see what's on tap for me, and then jump right back into that job that I'm working on. So really good way to move throughout the system very quickly and not be dependent on pages reloading every time. So one of the things we really want to look at in today's demo is some of the efficiencies we can pick up using HireDesk. Okay, so let's go back to the desktop here and talk a little bit about adding a job or a requisition to the HireDesk system. So there's a couple of different ways we can add a job to the system. I'm going to use the easiest one. I'm going to work right off of the jobs module and click the new button. When I click that button, I'm going to be taken to a job creation wizard where I've got two options available to me. I can work off of a job template or I can create a job manually. What we do encourage our clients and customers to do is create templates in the HireDesk template library so that you're able to store a significant amount of those jobs or requisitions that you're going to fill on a regular basis and then pull from those templates to create jobs moving forward. So if you've got 75 percent of a job description preloaded in a template, you've got a lot less work to do the next time you go to create a job. But again, we do have the ability to create a job manually as needed. Let's take a quick look at a sample job in HireDesk. So as an example, I set up a job in advance of today's session. I'm going to put this job into what we call edit mode and talk a little bit about the job uh, view that we're looking at here. In today's session, we're going to focus on uh, three to four key pieces of the job um, to keep things moving. First and foremost, the job overview, which is the page we're on right now, the description page, talent portals, and we'll talk a little bit about job board posting. From the standpoint of job board posting, we'll start at the bottom and work up. Um, we've got the ability through our telemetry broadcast technology to have an integrated uh, job board posting function so we can push jobs out of the higher desk system and post those to different job boards um, that we're integrated with as a customer. That can all be discussed with your account manager in the process of evaluating HireDesk. Let's move up back to the top here, talk a little bit about the overview page. So what I like in the overview page too in HireDesk is a cover sheet for the job. So it's going to have some very high level details for us, among them obviously the title for the job, um, some EEO related information if that's important to you as a customer, uh, and if we do not need to have EEO functionality or OFCCP type of reporting functionality on in the higher desk system, we can turn it off and clear this page up a little bit. Down below, we've got some optional date fields for doing some tracking on the job. We've got the ability to do multiple hires on one job or requisition in higher desk. We've got the ability to make associations with our hiring managers so we're able to communicate with our hiring managers and understand the type of reporting um, we might need to be doing for those hiring managers as well. A good example of that is maybe quarterly hiring reporting or annual hiring reporting. How many jobs did I fill for a certain hiring manager um, over the course of you know, a certain period of time? We can do that by making this association in HireDesk. And then last but not least, we're going to be asked to assign at least one user um, on the job to, to serve as the lead. So as an example here, my system admin is the lead on this job. 
And I've also granted access to a, a recruiter user as well by virtue of selecting uh, a team member over here on the, the left-hand column. So pretty straightforward. Um, some configuration on this page that we can do in implementation is the status. So as you can see here, we've got a couple of different statuses preloaded in Hiredesk for this particular demo database we're looking at. Uh, what we want to do in implementation is understand the different statuses your organization might have and build a list that's more representative of that in Hiredesk for you. Moving forward, let's take a look at the description page in the system. Uh, the description page in Hiredesk is a very configurable piece. Uh, what we want this page to do is give us an electronic representation of how your job descriptions look in the Hiredesk system and certainly for three very important audiences. One, your hiring managers or your clients. Two, yourselves as recruiter users in the system. And three, last but not least, your external audience, whether that's your uh, external candidate population or even an internal candidate population. This is the page where we can take uh, some time in the implementation process, configure this page to look as close to or as exactly uh, representative of the job description at your organization or a requisition description at your organization, um, and, and then be able to broadcast that out for our candidates to take a look at and determine whether they're a fit for an opportunity. So as a quick example here, you'll see we've got a couple of different um, field types on this page. We've got the ability to create a drop-down menu with custom values included in it. We've got small free text fields. We've got large free text fields. We'll come back and talk about the large free text fields here in a moment. Moving down the page a little bit, we've got the ability to put date fields in with a calendar selector. We've got uh, the ability to put in numeric fields, decimal fields, percentage fields. Uh, we've got the ability to do multi-select fields uh, where, where a customer or a candidate can hold control to select multiple options. So a lot of flexibility on this page, and what we really want you to come away with in this demo is that we've got the ability to try to shape this page to look as close to your job and requisition descriptions as you want them to look. And we will spend a lot of time in the implementation process um, getting the system configured to do that for you. So as an example, real quick, at the top of the screen, we've got a field here called office location. What we can do with that field tag if a customer says, hey, I don't want to call this field office location. I just want to call it location. We can rename the field, and if we need to, we can have custom values in a drop-down menu, or we can make this a free text field, just as an example of some things we can do. Another thing I want to point out on the description page, as you saw me click on this little blue pen icon here, is um, indicating I want to do some editing. Um, Hiredesk for the larger free text fields does have a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get editor, so we can do a lot of powerful editing in the system. You know, a quick example is let's say that this is a very important piece of our job description or a very important piece of that field that we're working on. And we want to change the formatting on it a little bit. Maybe we want to make this particular um, item red and bold it so that our candidates taking a look at our jobs or our hiring managers or clients reviewing our jobs are able to make sure they see that, that information. By simply making that formatting change and clicking save, Hiredesk is taking care of all of the formatting for me. So it's a really quick and easy way to do some really nice formatting in the system. You don't need to be an HTML expert to make really, really nice looking job descriptions in Hiredesk. Okay? So moving forward, the other item that I'd like to show in today's demo is the talent portals. And what the talent portals are basically going to be able to allow us to do is create application portals that we can integrate with um, web-based sites. Uh, a great example is a customer's external career site. Another example is, is maybe an intranet site where you're posting internal jobs for your candidates. So as you can see here in my demo database, I've got four different application portals set up in this system. And what the easiest way to, to explain the, the different application portals is, is think of them each as a different door that leads to the same room, with the same room being your higher desk database. Okay? So we've got some quick controls enabled, uh, to enable us to push this job description out to an integrated career portal. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to instruct Hiredesk that we want to put that job up on our portal. And we've also got additional control where we can set a date range that we want to push that job out to. So that's really nice functionality as well. We can also make that a featured job. Down below here, we've got a couple of different columns that are representative of each of those portals that we see in the upper portion here in each row. And we've got checkboxes that are going to allow us to pull all of that information that we configure into that job description page 
and determine what needs to go up on which portal. And one of the great things about HireDesk, too, going back to the templates example I gave in creating a job, is we can set all of these checkboxes on a uh, template level. So you'd only need to set these checkboxes once, work off of the template moving forward, and you don't need to concern yourself uh, with setting these checkboxes every time. So that's really nice and handy. So as an example, we did uh, we talked a little bit about how to put a job out on our application portal. We know that we select this checkbox to push it out to that integrated application portal. Let's take a look at a sample of how an application process might look in HireDesk. Okay, so what we've got here is a mock-up of our own talent technology career site. And as you can see here, we've got the application portal that is a piece of the HireDesk system nested very nicely on this web page. Um, you know, we've done some, some basic color scheme matching, some font matching. Um, and the way that this particular page is integrated is through an iframe. We've got a couple of different ways we can integrate the application portals with your career site or sites. Uh, we can handle it via that iframe integration. We can handle it via an API or we can create a pop-up window. It's really what works best for our customer. And what we really want to do is keep your branding scheme wrapped around the iframe so that you're able to manage your branding as you see fit without having to change the application portal every time you want to do that. Now certainly we can do that as needed. Uh, so basically as we see here, very, very um, nice, clean application portal. Uh, color scheme matches up very nicely with the surrounding career site. Let's take a look at a sample application process. So let's go ahead and click on our top job here, the apartment property manager position, and take a look at the sample application process that I've put in place for today's session. Once we click on that job, we're going to see a nice clean presentation of that job here as well. You can see that change we made in the formatting on the back end of the system there. And Let's jump into the application process. I'm going to click Apply now. And by default, HireDesk does have a very light registration process. This is optional. We can disable it. What's great about the email address registration process is that the email address serves as the unique record identifier in HireDesk. So this is how we can determine, say, John A. Smith from John B. Smith. It's that email address that allows us to create a unified profile in the database. We can stack an application history on that profile um, and things like that. So a couple of different ways we can get our information into the system. Uh, this is configurable. We can determine what we like or don't like in this particular registration process. Uh, the way that my demo system is set up today, it's going to allow us to upload a resume, or we can sign up. Um, or apply for the job using a social media account, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Google+. These are optional. Um, each one can be selected as an option or deselected based on customer preference. For today's session, I'm just going to grab a resume document. And go ahead and click the Upload button. So what's happening here is our telemetry apply technology is going to um, get us set up to go ahead and extract resume um, information out off that document, parse it into a candidate record. Uh, the telemetry apply technology is the industry standard in extraction technology. And that is built into our own HireDesk ATS at no additional cost. So once I click continue after confirming my information, what's happening here in just a couple of seconds is that tele telemetry apply technology is uh, grabbing that information in my resume document, parsing it into a candidate record, and giving me a real nice head start on uh, the process of applying for this opportunity. So one of the things we really want to do is help your candidates eliminate some of the, the data entry process in the application experience. So um, we want to take as much information off that resume document as possible. At the same time, we want that candidate to have the ability to update um, any information that might be missing. So as an example here, I can key in a cell phone number if it wasn't on my resume document for some reason. Um, you can see there's a couple of fields on here that are marked as required fields. Those are all optional. We'll set that up with our customers in the implementation process. Um, the con content 
it, throughout the application process is also customizable on an implementation by implementation basis. So let's just give the system a couple of uh, fields here that we need to get through our process here. A uh, great example here is uh, you know asking the candidate or the cust or the yeah the candidate to self-report you know what uh, how did you find me uh, how did you hear about our organization how did you hear about this opportunity so this can all be set up customized uh, in the implementation process with your implementation manager uh, another good page in the system as an example here is what's called the general profile this is a great place to ask broad-reaching questions to your candidates as they come into the system so we can ask some high-level information, you know, how much are you interested in earning, um, how much are you earning today, uh, when are you available to start. These are all samples. This is all configurable material. This is all um, things that are just in my demo database. So what we'll do in the implementation process is ask our customers, you know, what type of questions would you want to ask on a page like this, or would you like to have a page like this in your application process? Moving forward, we can extract an, uh, employment and education backgrounds right off the resume document certainly give the candidate the ability to update this material as needed. We can also turn this off in the application process and by virtue of the extraction technology still capture this material on the back end of the database um, but not have to show it to the candidate in an application process. So keep it nice and neat and clean. Moving forward, we've got the ability too to ask uh, job specific screening questions in Hired Desk through our talent qualification interview process or TQI for short. And what the TQI is going to allow us to do is uh, set up some, some pretty powerful screening questions that uh, we've got a couple of different options. We've got yes, no, true, false, multiple choice, multi-select, uh, essay, and, and numeric decimal type of questions. We've also got the ability to set up red flag or knockout questions with this, with this technology. So as an example here, I've asked my candidate if they possess a minimum of five years experience in the real estate in industry. Let's say that candidate says no, and I set that question up as a red flag question. That's a great way to grab quick information that this candidate does not possess my minimum qualifications when I go back and look at that candidate on the back end of the database. So it's really nice function functionality. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment here. So once I click next page at the end of that screening questionnaire, I'm going to receive um, acknowledgement as a candidate that my application is complete. I'm also going to receive an email indicating that the, uh, the application has been received. The email that the candidate receives is fully customizable with your implementation manager. It can include uh, your own branding as well and certainly your own content. So pretty handy. Let's get back into HireDesk here and take a look at candidate management. So as we jump back into our job, we can see that our sample candidate here, Stephen, has uh, appeared at the top of our list here as a new candidate. Uh, we've got a number of other candidates in play right now in this particular sample opportunity. Um, a couple uh, different stages represented here, and let's talk a little bit about these stages. So one of the big things uh, that's another big gain in the Hired Desk system is this gray bar at the top of the screen that's called the, the uh, hiring workflow. These are associated with the job, and what this is going to allow us to do is help our customers understand where are our candidates going after they come to us as new and go to one of these two end, end games here, with hired and rejected being our ultimate destination for these opportunities. So what we want to help our customers stay on track with is what are the steps that we're going to go through in the process of ending up at these two stages. And we can handle multiple workflows in HireDesk based on different hiring processes. Each workflow in HireDesk is able to be uh, a custom application process so that we're able to offer our customers the ability to run different application processes through the same portal based on a workflow. So it's very, very powerful functionality. And one of the things that I really like about this and that we pride ourselves on is the ability to create those customized workflows. So we're going to have your custom nomenclatures in these stage headers uh, help you understand what stage are my candidates in as I'm working them through my opportunity here. And then last but not least, um, help us stay on track with uh, uh, the different processes that we may have for each job type or, or recruitment type that we're running through the system. So it's very flexible. Uh, it's, it's not something that we tell you you need to do. You need to, you need to phone screen somebody. You need to uh, you know, have an HR interview. 
You're going to tell us what your process is in a requirements gathering session in the implementation phase, and we're going to build those workflows representative of your own terminologies. So pretty flexible. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our candidate, Stephen, here, and I'll give you a couple of examples of some candidate movement here. So I'm going to highlight my candidate record there, and I'm going to click on this traffic light icon, and I'm going to move this candidate to my next stage in my particular uh, workflow here for my opportunity. And let's take a look at that particular stage in my workflow. So as we saw in the sample application process, we know that Stephen completed uh, that screening questionnaire, the TQI module piece where I asked the job specific screening questions. We can see here on a quick glance that Stephen scored a 75% on that particular questionnaire, but we do know that he did not pass one of our red flag questions. So a very important thing to point out here is that we're not taking the candidates out of view for you. We're not going to, to push them off a cliff, if you will, and remove them from your view. We're just going to give you a heads up that, hey, this person may not have passed all the questions that you asked. Um, let's say we want to learn a little bit more about that. We can click on the Assessments tab in Higher Desk. There's a linkable result. I can open that result. It's going to give me a new page that's going to tell me how that candidate fared on the questionnaire, what were the questions I asked, what were the, quest the responses the candidate gave me, what were any red flags, and you know, where did they pass or fail. This is also portable. We can download it, send it to a hiring manager or a client, and it also uh, can be custom branded. So if you'd like to put your branding on the PDF that you're going to be sending out to somebody to take a look at it, we can handle that as well. Taking things a little bit further, Let's actually bounce over to our uh, HR interview stage. We've got, uh, let's take a look at the phone screen, sorry about that. We've got a handful of candidates in a couple of different stages. Um, you know, as we know, we've got to uh, take a look at our candidate here, CC. Another great piece of the Higher Desk system is the ability to understand on that unified profile, again, using the email address as a unique record identifier, where is that candidate in my job process? What other jobs may that candidate have applied to? And how did they end up with any of those particular jobs? So as we can see here on this particular candidate record, this individual has applied for a handful of jobs in the Higher Desk system. Uh, she's applied for you know, approximately six, seven different jobs here. We're able to get a quick understanding. Who was the hiring manager for those jobs? Who was the team lead on those jobs? What were the jobs exactly? Uh, what is the status of those jobs today? And where did that candidate end up or where are they now in the respective workflows for each of those jobs that they applied to or we put them in um, from within our database view? So real quick, a great thing to see here is on CC for the Service uh, Center Operations Analyst position. If we click on this linkable uh, stage pro pro progression, we're able to understand that CC came to us on the 18th of January and magically within one minute's time she was moved to a rejected stage and we're able to understand what that reason was. So this is going to give us a really nice audit trail of the activity that that candidate's had in the system. Let's grab a different one and see if we've got a little bit more. Um, so here's another a, a good example of one where we know that there's been a progression of sorts here with this candidate. She's moved from the new stage to the HR interview phase, to a phone screen, back to a phone screen phase, all on the 12th of February, date and time stamped, we understand who made that action. So what we're able to begin doing is building a powerful profile on this candidate and storing that information on the candidate record. What that's going to allow us to do, obviously, is gain efficiencies, cut down on the great unknown, trying to figure out why somebody was a fit or not a fit, um, maybe you've got an employee that was working with a candidate on a particular recruitment. They've left the organization. You find that candidate in a database search six months later. You should have that history in your database now and not have the great unknown. So that's one of the things we really want to solve here. So moving back to our candidate Stevens record, let's get a, a little bit of an understanding of some of the things we can do uh, from an activity perspective. So as an example here, we know when we took that questionnaire, Stephen uh, failed the red flag question that was a minimum five years experience. Um, you know, as an example here, I might tab that I really find this candidate to be a good fit for our organization, but unfortunately they're a little bit light on experience. Maybe they're a good fit for a more junior level position. 
Let's cut a quick note on that. We're going to be able to store the history uh, associated with the notes, and we'll know the job that that candidate had applied to that we're cutting this note for. Obviously, the association is made with the candidate. We can even link it to a hiring manager or client as well if we're so inclined. I'm going to add that note to my candidate record, and if I look down below here in the Activities tab, I'm going to see that note that I just cut. So if a different recruiter in your organization finds that note on the candidate record, they're going to be able to understand much faster than they would have in the past, what was the reason that that candidate has been moved to the rejected stage, or what's the reason that candidate is, is, is in a certain stage in your database. So once again, we're really able to store information and begin to understand more and more about these candidates that we're building profiles on. Another really interesting and, and neat point of the Hired Us system that I really like is, let's say we want to take a run through this list of candidates in the screening stage. So what I'm going to do here is double click on Steven's record and it's actually going to open up a window that's going to allow me to view his record in a little bit greater detail. I'm going to click view full screen and what this is going to do is allow me to take a look at this candidate's resume. So if we follow along here you're going to see I've got Steven, Kyle, Nancy, Bill and so on and so forth. Uh, for those resume readers out there this is some really neat functionality here. We're able to um, you know, one of the things that I like to say is, is maybe over your lunch break you want to read a resume. If you've got your left hand free to eat your lunch and your right hand on your mouse, you're able to grab this arrow at the top of the uh, window here in the right hand corner. And I'm able to read through the resume, take a look at it, and cycle through these resumes. So take a look at this. Just by clicking that arrow, I'm moving from Stephen to Kyle. I'll move from Kyle to Nancy, Nancy to Bill. And I'm able to run through these resumes, give them a read, make a decision as to whether these candidates might be a fit for the opportunity that I'm working on. And another really neat piece of this functionality is we've got the ability to disposition these candidates directly from this view. So if I click down below here, change stage on Bill, let's say for example, Bill's not a fit for this position. I know he's not a fit. I know why. I'm able to select that I want to move that candidate to the rejected stage. And then Hyrus is going to ask me to give a reason for that. So as you can see here in my demo system, I've got a handful of reasons loaded in here. Um, we're going to set up custom values uh, in the implementation phase with our customers. So the values that you see in my demo database are not necessarily the values that will be in uh, a customer system if they go through implementation with us. So as an example here, I'm going to indicate that Bill does not meet my preferred qualifications. I'm going to click Save. And the way my system is set up, is that HireDesk is going to even allow me to send a personal email to Bill, letting him down, letting him know he's no longer a fit for the opportunity. I can determine whether I don't want to send that email, I can preview it, or I can just go ahead and click send and off it's going to go. The association is already made because HireDesk knows what Bill's address is. I've even got some flexibility here based on my profiles that I set up in HireDesk. I can make this a no reply email if I wanted to. So a lot of flexibility there. Um, and this is an optional piece of the system. If, you do, if a customer does not want to have automated email functionality on a rejection stage, we don't need to have that. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here and not send that out. But I have moved Bill to the rejected stage. So again, real quick, if we want to fly through a, a handful of resumes on our lunch hour uh, or when we've got a couple of minutes to run through some resume reading, we don't need to keep clicking in and out of candidate records. We can do it all from this view. It's a really great way to pick up efficiencies in higher desk. So, um, you know, a real time saver here, and again, that's what we really want to show today is the ability to cut down on all the clicking in and out of records uh, in the system. So that's really candidate management in a nutshell. Um, you know, a couple of other things that we can talk about, the ability to store documents on a candidate record. As an example here, if I wanted to stick an assessment or maybe some um, post-interview notes on this candidate record, very quickly and easily I can just click the plus sign and grab a file off of my local directory. You know, as an example here, I'll just grab a resume document that I've got stored on my local directory. And just like that, I've added some notes to my candidate record um, that I can view anytime I want. Anybody using the system can read it. I can go ahead and just grab that document that I've uploaded to my candidate record and take a quick look at it. So, you know, again, this is a resume document we're looking at, but if you're able to envision that as post-interview notes or something like that, yet another way we can store some information on the candidate profile in the database pick up efficiencies, and centralize our data.
Okay? Let's take a look at the Search Center in Higher Desk next. So moving forward, what I'm going to do here is click on the search item in the menu bar. And let's search on candidates here. And this is going to open up what we call the Advanced Search Center. We've also got a basic search center for uh, customers that would like things scaled down a little bit. I personally prefer the Advanced Search Center. I think that this is one of the, the best features of the system as well, in addition to the active windows and the ability to cycle through resumes. This is a very powerful search center. It's going to give us a lot of flexibility and options in terms of searching. We've got the ability to search on resume keywords. We've got the ability to search um, candidate fields and system fields in, in Higher Desk. And then we've got the ability to do some conceptual ranking. Let's start with keyword search. So we're going to keep things pretty basic for today's session. Let's say, for example, we want some people that have some experience with Excel. I'm going to grab that, add that term to my search criteria. And then I'm going to grab candidates from my candidate field search. And I want to do a proximity search. So let's do a combined search on candidates with Excel experience and candidates that reside 25 miles from where I sit today from my postal code. I can add those to my search criteria. I can change the operand by simply clicking on it and changing it. So as you can see here, I've just built a, a small search string by grabbing a couple of items from over here on the left-hand column, updating the operand. I can run a quick count on what's going to be available to me before I leave my search center by clicking on this count result button. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I know I've got four candidates in my database that are 25 miles or less from the zip code I sit in today and have Microsoft Excel experience. So let's say that's what I'm looking for. I want to go out and take a look at those candidates. I'm going to click Search Now. HireDesk is going to run through those search results and give me a return there. So as an example, we can go back to this list and do the same thing we did when we were working within that property manager position. I'm going to go ahead and double click on Mary Lou's record here, the first record at the top of the list. And maybe I want to read through these four resumes real quick. I'm going to change my view to full screen here. It's going to take me directly to the resume, and I can cycle right through that list again, as we just saw in the last um, candidate management piece. So I can run through these candidates very quickly. Uh, oddly enough, they all look very similar. Um, I can move back to the top of the list. Let's say, for example, example Mary Lou is a really good fit for me here. I'm going to grab Mary Lou, and let's say I want to add her to a different job in the system based on the search that I just conducted. Maybe I've got an, a position that's very Excel dependent um, near that, that 60084 area, or the zip code. So for example here, let's say we want to tie Mary Lou to that equipment researcher position. Very quickly and very easily, as you saw, I clicked on this little briefcase icon indicating I want to move that candidate to a job. I'm able to highlight the job, click Add Jobs, and just like that, I'm going to get a couple of prompts. The system is going to ask me, taking things a little bit further, do you want to leave that candidate in the new stage of the workflow for that opportunity, or would you like to move that candidate to a different stage? Let's say, for example, we want to keep that candidate in the new stage for that job. We know using our active windows, we can bounce right back over to that job, and we can go find that job in our system now. So I know that I put Mary Lou in the equipment researcher job. I can take things even a little bit further with candidate management and that search center working together. I know that I just moved Mary Lou over there. Let's say now I want to send her an email and ask her if she's interested in taking a look at that opportunity. So I've highlighted Mary Lou's record. I'm going to select the action that I would like to email this candidate. So I can go down here and I can grab email selected candidate. I've got a couple of different options. Another example here, I can send the job description to Mary Lou with a couple of clicks of the mouse. So this is going to really allow us to send communications in a consolidated fashion out of Higher Desk, ask the candidate any number of things. And we did that all with just a couple of clicks in the mouse after finding that candidate in a search in our database. So pretty powerful technology. Last but not least, let's talk a little bit about the reports module in Higher Desk. So first and foremost, um, Higher Desk has 13 different standard reports that are going to allow us to populate just a little bit of information and understand um, what the return we're going to get on that is. So I'm just going to click on this activity tracking report. As you can see here, it's going to ask me for a couple of things. It's going to ask me for a date range. 
it's going to ask me, what do I want to report on? Do I want to report on all the recruiters that are working different jobs in my hire desk system or just a specific recruiter? If I select specific, I need to indicate which recruiter that is. And then I can determine what activities do I want to know about, what are the different activities I want to report on, and then I can draw that report. This is a great uh, functionality in the system where for customers that don't want to build their own reports and find value in standard reporting, there's as I said, there's 13 canned reports, if you will, very simple parameters like we see here. Uh, and, and many customers are, are very happy using the standard reporting functionality. Uh, for customers that need a little bit more robust reporting, we've got the ad hoc report builder in the Hire Desk system. This is a wizard-driven interface. Quick high-level overview is the ability to create our own report in the system. So what it's going to give us is different data elements that we want to create a report on. So all of the different fields that are built into the Hire, da Hire Desk database, whether it be when we turn that database on, or once we've had a chance to implement the system with an implementation manager and create our own organization uh, custom fields in the system, all of those fields are available to us in the ad hoc report builder. So a quick example is, let's say we want to do some reporting on candidate activity and jobs. I'm going to select that data element. It's going to shrink that list of the more relevant things that I've just asked about, and then we can begin to build a report. So uh, if I were to click on table here, and determine what columns I want to appear in that report. It's going to give me just the column values that I just asked for. I can grab those column values. Let's just grab a handful here and put them into my report. I'm going to click OK. I've got the ability to assign a header name for it. I can make those a sortable field. Uh, I can push them up and pull them down based on how I want them to appear in my report. We've got some other functions available here. We've got, uh, for, for those customers that really like graphs and, and visual aids in their reporting, we've got the ability to add pie charts, bar graphs, line charts. Um, these reports are also ex exportable. So as you saw me click on this export icon, we can export these reports to Excel, Word, PDF, a CSV if you need to create a flat file. So a couple of different options there. Um, so so it, it is a very powerful report builder. It's wizard driven, not too tough to deal with. Um, from a report builder um, functionality standpoint. Um, and, and as you can see here, a lot of great functionality in the system. And, and from a quick end-to-end -end overview, that's Hire Desk in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and close things out a little bit here, talk a little bit about next steps. Um, from an implementation standpoint, while we talked a little bit about the ability to fully customize the system and make it very unique to a customer environment, uh, the reality is, is that HireDesk does not need a lot of customization out of the box. Uh, it is fairly ready to go when we turn it on. Obviously, we do want to spend time in the, in the implementation phase and uh, build that system wrapped around your own environment. Um, it is a quick start program. We work from a system activation standpoint where we turn up a new database. We'll spend time configuring the system with our implementation manager and our customer team. We'll work on integration with integration being primarily getting those, those application portals that we talked about and saw in the demo um, tied to or integrated with the customer's career site or sites. Uh, we can migrate data from an existing system or from your local directories um, pretty easily. And then last but not least, certainly training, which um, you know, is available to us via an online training center that's built right into HireDesk. And for those customers that would like some additional training, um, that can also be negotiated into a package. All of the implementation work is delivered remotely, so there's no travel fees, no expenses that a customer needs to uh, incur. A little bit about service, support, and training. It's pretty important to us that our customers feel like we're, uh, there's people behind the product at Talent Technology and HireDesk. Um, each customer has a dedicated account manager. A dedicated implementation specialist is going to work with your customer team to get the system set up. We've got a support desk that is live and in our headquarters in uh, Richmond, B.C. from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. That is a toll-free support line. We've also got the ability to, support, um, to, to send support tickets via email and via an online support request. So a lot of flexibility there. Uh, support and training is built into the product as indicated previously. We've got FAQs, a help menu, the support line information is available. And then we've also got a lot of recorded training modules available for our customers that are on demand. So you can learn Hire Desk on your time 
One of the great things I like to tell customers when we're talking about potentially moving over to Hiredesk is in the process of just working with an implementation manager, this is such an intuitive system that many of our customers are able to pick up the system, um, certainly at least from a, a basic to intermediate standpoint, just in spending time in the implementation meeting. So it's a very intuitive and easy to use system. Definitely does not require deep, deep training to pick up this system. And that is it. Uh, thank you for spending some time with me this afternoon in taking a look at the Hire Desk system. Um, please get in touch with your account manager or sales rep in order to learn more about next steps. And thank you very much for your time.